Okay, uh, good morning everybody. It's my great honor to have the chance to uh, introduce this course to you, to all of you. And it's good to see so many people to come over here. Okay, so uh, before the class start, I'd like to introduce the course a little bit. So uh, would you please look into your syllabus? So the syllabus is also uh, showing uh, on the screen here, okay? Uh, so the course name is the microsystem design. Actually, it's a very important course and a general course uh, for the design and of the microsystem. So, uh, so these are for the whole semester courses. So it's three credits course. So I will be the in instructor. Okay, so now we will go to the tentative outline for the microsystem design, okay? So uh, actually, uh, we have a sitting 16 weeks. So we divide our courses into 16 different topics. Okay. Uh, this is in different topics, including uh, two midterms and one final presentation. So we consider midterm and the final presentation uh, as part of our courses. Okay. So in addition to the midterm and uh, the final presentation, so uh, we, you can divide uh, uh, the contents into three different kind of uh, aspects. Okay. Uh, the first aspect is from week one until like week six. So uh, it's a title from one to five here. So these five, six weeks, I will give you the introduction of your background you are currently lacking. For example, like the fabrication of the mans and the sound scaling low and the sound uh, important ideas about uh, the design. Okay, so this is the basic things i like to give you. Uh, so after this uh, uh, fundamental background introduction, so we will uh, have uh, the first uh, midterm exam. Okay, so after the midterm one, so I will go to uh, the the main part of our course. So in our main part of the course, we will teach two different kinds of things design. Uh, the first one is a micro accelerometer. It's a sensor, micro sensor. Okay. So the micro sensor, uh, especially inertial sensor, okay, will be introduced firstly. So after the sensor design and uh, the second part we will focus on, before the end of the final presentation, we will focus on the one actuator design. Okay. So uh, after you finish the sensor design and the actuator design, you probably got a very uh, initial fundamental idea about how those sensors and the actuator uh, design and also how to use the current technology and the knowledge from the microfabrication and uh, to help on the design. Because uh, before the real design, you really need to uh, understand what you can do or what, when, uh, what, what kind of else thing you cannot do. And uh, if you don't understand the fabrication, you have uh, no idea what kind of structure you can really fabricate. So that's why we put the fabrication uh, before uh, the real design. Okay, so uh, the major uh, contents of the, uh, the materials we are going to teach is based on the micro design class notes. Uh, the class notes are divided into uh, nine different chapters, okay? So uh, I have a different uh, uh, evolution of this course in, in the past uh, 10 years. So currently we are going to use the 2016 version, okay? okay. Try to download it, okay, from the website. And then the second one will be the CMOS layout design, okay? So we will use this, uh, this one um, in like a, uh, the, after the first midterm, when we started uh, to teach you the design of the uh, micro machining uh, process, uh, actually we will start uh, to, to learn how to do the design in the CMOS uh, layout. Because um, uh, in the homework, you will find out not only micro sensors, uh, in the homework, we will combine some, a little bit circuit into the, the sensor. If you have some different question regarding uh, different kind of sensor or actuator, you want to have more information, you can go to this book. Okay. It's very, in very detailed things. So the book is uh, from 2000. Okay, it's microsystem design. It's a good book, a lot of information inside. So in addition to the uh, textbooks, I'd like to give you some uh, idea about the references we are using. Okay, so some of the materials are coming from the following uh, six different books. Uh, some, uh, some are from the uh, conference, uh, uh, journal papers or conference papers. Okay, so for the uh, references, uh, uh, if we talk about the sensors, so some of the information will come in from the semiconductor sensors. 
uh, by Dr. Shi, uh, uh, Dr. Shi. Uh, it's quite an old book, but it's given a lot of it, different kind of information about the semiconductor sensors. It gives an example around like a, more than hun a couple hundred different kind of type of semiconductor sensors. Uh, we'll use only one or two. The second one, uh, micro machines, uh, actually is like a history book, the second one. So give you uh, in the introduction how the micro machine um, field start and how did this uh, field evolve. Yeah, in the past 10, uh, 20 years. Okay, so you want to get some information about the history, you can come to this, this book. And also we get a some, put some information also from this book into our, our text notes. Okay, uh, so I will give some introduction today. Okay, that's from this book. The third one, Michael McCain's Man's Classic and the Seminar Papers to, to uh, 19, uh, 1990. So this is a quite old book, so you cannot find out anywhere in the bookstore or library. Uh, because it's a quite old book. I got one volume in my um, bookshelf. And uh, the important thing is uh, actually starting from like 20 years ago or even 30 years ago, when the micro machine start uh, to, um, to show its ability, uh, you can find a lot of, a lot of new ideas in that time. And even now, we use, use those ideas uh, to do the fabrication, do the design. So uh, I think those ideas are important. If you lose the, the, those kind of origin of ideas, uh, you may uh, lose the, your foundations. So, uh, so I use uh, some of the uh, examples and ideas from these books as well, the Michael McCain's uh, Mans. And actually, uh, those are very classical uh, conference paper or journal papers collection. So it's not a, really a book the written in organizer, you know, chapter no. Actually, it's an assembly of different uh, journal papers, conference papers together. Okay, become this uh, one volume of book. It's a number three. Number four is an interesting book. You can find it in the library. It's not easy to find it in the bookstore, but in the library, you can find out that. I also have one volume of this, on science and life. Uh, the purpose of this book is to introduce uh, in the life, uh, in different kind of uh, lifestyle. You can see the size effect, the scaling law. So the scaling law already exists in our current life life cycle. You, you can see everywhere. Like if you look at like a, the butterfly, look at at the ants, look at different insects. So they they, they are a uh, perfect expert to 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 use those kind of fundamental uh, micro scale phenomena every day in their life. Uh, so in this book. Uh, they accumulated a lot of examples from the life and they tell you about the scaling law. So some of the question of the scaling law is from this book. You also can find out some solution. <laughs> but, uh, so, but the question sometimes is not easy. But I think it's good to use your brain. Yeah. And when you are doing the homework, uh, especially in the uh, scaling effect, I think it's good. Okay, so it's from the uh, life, uh, Science and Life, this book. And then the last the two are the very uh, classical and the fundamental uh, uh, textbooks of the micro machining. So first I'd like to let you give a brief introduction of this course, the micro system design. So the scope of micro system design is uh, like an intermediate uh, course. So before this course, uh, uh, people uh, usually will take the introduction to men's related courses. And then we'll go to the design. Uh, the difference between the design and the introduction is um, uh, the design will give you more in-depth view of the, uh, the, the knowledge. Uh, we want to combine the knowledge uh, to design uh, workable things. For the introduction, maybe you just listen to all the knowledge and get the ideas. But in the micro system design, you need to hang on to practice how to use the, those knowledge to do the real design work, to make the device work. Okay, the difference is and after uh, the microsystem design, actually uh, another course, after this course is called the microsystem implementation. The implementation means uh, you want to use the micro sensor or micro actuator. It cannot work on its own. They need to combine with like sensors, uh, sorry, uh, circuits, controllers, and also uh, like a, a power supplies, those kind of different things. You implement all those uh, um, help, uh, assistance things together it becomes a whole system. So only the system 
can work for you. Only the device. Sometimes you can do testing, but you want to use it in a, a everyday life is not possible. So you need to implement that into a total system. So the microsystem implementation will be the next course uh, after the system design. Okay. So uh, in addition to the microsystem design, actually after you learn this course, uh, you are uh, welcome and encourage you to take other courses, like a biomass, RF mass, optical mass. So in the mass field, uh, fundamentally, we briefly uh, split the mass field into three large territories, including the application in bio, biotechnology, bio uh, med medical, med medicine, and also in RF, that's your uh, iPhone, uh, cellular phone systems, or optical mass, uh, in different uh, way to operate the light. Okay, so these are three uh, big different territories. So I believe uh, some of you coming from different uh, places, maybe from like Professor uh, Zhe Liang Ye, is, uh, he's working on RF mass or Sun Xian Li, right? So I think several people coming from Professor Sun Xian Li. So they are working on the RF mass related uh, topics. And some from like a Professor uh, Fang, William Fang, or uh, Professor uh, Zhe Liang Ye as well, uh, working on the optical mass. And some people from like Professor Darren Zhao or from um, maybe Jian Zhong, Jian Zhong Fu. Uh, they are working on the biomass fields, including myself, working on the biomass field. So, um, so after this course, there are many different uh, uh, courses you can choose from, uh, like uh, in related to bio, RF, or optical. Okay. So these are more uh, related to the application. Okay. After you learn the design, you can apply to different fields. Okay. And also something about the materials. Uh, in, the, in the past, we have this kind of course of microsystem material, but now there's no people offer this kind of uh, courses now. So I think it's OK. So you still can um, go to the material science department to take a related course uh, related to like nano materials or something like that. And uh, we have uh, the course in the uh, NASA semester, it's the micro scale fluid mechanics and heat transfer. Our, um, uh, microbial fluidic uh, systems uh, related uh, courses. And then in this semester, in the afternoon, uh, we have another course we call the Advanced Microfabrication Lab. That's a graduate, uh, graduate level courses. And uh, another course, the Microfabrication Lab, is an undergraduate level course. So these two courses uh, teach you how to fabricate real, uh, real hand on fabrication process. So for the, this afternoon, the Advanced Microfabrication Lab, we will offer 13 different kind of fabrication uh, way. So you will learn from uh, this course and uh, do the real fabrication in this course. And then at the end of the semester, uh, you can get a real device, the chip, uh, from the, 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 the course. I think it's a very useful course. OK. And also microtransducers, just uh, as I mentioned. Microtransducers talking about sensors and uh, different kind of sensors and actuators. OK, so uh, after understand the uh, courses you can take. And then we go to the uh, very interesting background of these uh, kind of fields, uh, the micro system or even nanotechnology fields. Uh, these two fields are originally found uh, two important lectures. Both are given by R Professor uh, Richard Feynman, uh, who was the uh, professor in the Caltech. And uh, Professor Richard Feynman, also the uh, Nobel laureate in 1965. Okay, 1965. So the first lecture was given uh, at, uh, uh, in 1959, six years before he got the Nobel uh, Prize. Okay. So the title of the first lecture uh, is called uh, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. Uh, the bottom does not mean on your floor, <laughs> no. <laughs> the bottom means uh, in small scale. Okay. So in that time, you can consider uh, it's the 1915s, 1916s, uh, actually it's uh, after World War, uh, World War II. So in the whole world, people try to build up uh, large th things, like a uh, spatial ship, like a big ship, like a train, like a cars, tanks, large things, or bridge, huge bridges. But not many people consider to build things in small scale. So it's a very interesting lecture in that time because it's quite early. No people think of that kind of idea in the past. 
Yeah. So people either do very large things, or the other ones, like Professor Richard Freeman, do very small things. The things are smaller than nucleus. Okay, smaller than a couple of Armstrongs. But this is something missing between Armstrong to millimeter size. Not many people working on that. Okay. So you try to think of, uh, actually, there are many interesting things in this uh, small scale. Uh, actually, when you talk about uh, scale, this is a uh, scale around like a six orders of magnitude. It's not small, actually, if you consider the space. It's not small. Six orders of magnitude of the, uh, the different uh, size. But for people, I think it's uh, quite small, smaller than our human body, smaller than millimeter size. So uh, meter size or even millimeter size. So people uh, usually don't pay attention to this kind of uh, fields. So that was an invited talk in annual meeting of American Applied Physics Physical Society in December uh, 26, in 1959. So, uh, so that time uh, was uh, also uh, 10 years after the uh, first uh, semiconductor transistor invented. So the first transistor invented in 1947. So 59 is uh, roughly 12 uh, years uh, afterward. And also uh, three important person, uh, Barton, Barton, Britain, and uh, Shockley, they got a Nobel Prize in 1956 for the semiconductor transistors. They first invented in 1947 in uh, Bell Lab. Okay. And uh, so just after the, this uh, Nobel Prize, uh, uh, 56, three years later, Professor Richard Freeman gave this lecture. Interesting, right? Three years later. Okay. So because of this technology uh, available in the market, actually the semiconductor fabrication technology available in the market during that time. So uh, this is, I think, is the right time, okay, lecture for that new era uh, to uh, inspire people uh, to work on different uh, new fields. Okay. So uh, he's thinking of uh, not only for semiconductor fabrication, can we think a way, okay, to do two things? The first one, can we use this uh, same technology for some kind of information storage? That's the first thing you want to introduce. The second one, can we use the same technology for doing small, tiny machines, mechanical things? Because um, we talk about transistor, usually transistor is like a electrical engineering things. It's not a mechanical engineering sense. So you don't see the movement of structures, okay, if you use the transi transistors, only electrons has been moved around inside the circuit, but you don't see the real mov moving things. So he, think, he is thinking, why not to use the same idea to fabricate some tiny devices for different applications? So this uh, inspired people, okay. So if it is possible, you become a new field not for only manufacturing, okay, but also for controlling. You can control tiny things in that scale, okay. But people will ask, what's the use <laughs> of this kind of manipulation, fabrication? You want to fabricate more toys in small scale for children to play with? Maybe not, okay. So he proposed two applications, major application. The first one is the information storage. Remember, in that time, we don't have many ways to do the uh, information storage, right? Our floppy disk are uh, invented like 20 years later, actually. Our hard disk, even, even 30 years later, and the fresh memory, 40 or 50 years later. So during that time, we don't have many recording materials, except that like, um, um, our, no, there's no CD at all, yeah, in that time. So only the... the the what? The, the black? The, the Wii line? Yeah. Only that thing can be used for recording. So you, you can consider maybe if uh, the way is possible, maybe it can revolutionize a new era for information storage. So he gave an example about our, uh, if we write a 24, want to write a 24 volumes of an encyclopedia, Brit uh, Britannia. Uh, Britannica on the head of a pin. Because uh, if you see the uh, uh, encyclopedia, uh, it takes 24 volumes. It's occupied almost the whole table of this lecture. Okay. 
So it's a lot of volume of the uh, information inside. However, if you uh, write 22 items as a dot, okay, you write it like words. Each word contains uh, like hundreds of dots. So each dot occupies like 22 items. So you can put everything inside a very small area on the head of a pin. Consider a head of pins only like a millimeter, maybe smaller, couple hundred micron, right? In diameter, the size. But consider if you shrink the dots small enough, you can put the whole volume, 24 volume of encyclopedia on the top of the pin. That's why exactly you can see in your fresh memory right now. But during that day, nobody can image that kind of things. Okay, but it's quite inspiring idea. Okay, so this idea to store things, I think so that's why the talk is called, uh, there's a printed room at the bottom. So in small scale, if you can shrink those kind of recording um, information in a very small uh, dust, so you can use in very small area uh, to accommodate all the information in a small space. Okay, so this idea, but people will ask how to do that <laughs> in that time, right? So he think of, uh, maybe you can reverse microscope. Uh, in that time, we, we already have a microscope, and also the, like a uh, SEN, uh, uh, TM maybe, uh, yeah, the scanning electron mi 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 microscope. We already have that kind of things. So he's, think, uh, he's thinking maybe you can reverse microscope, because for microscope, we try to enlarge things, enlarge the image from the small things. So if we reverse the application, the operation of microscope, we can focus a large things into small area. So maybe by using that way, we can project the small light, small area of light, onto the substrate. And on the substrate, is a, if a, the substrate is a photoelectric um, uh, sensitive material, so we can record light information into electrical uh, form. Okay, so we can form a dot. So, so if we, it's possible, so it's easy uh, to put the 24 million books in a small area, only three square yards. Okay, one yard is related to uh, around like a one meter. Okay, three yards is only three, three meter square. It's not uh, that big. Three meters square is maybe it's, uh, like uh, only tenth of this uh, room. One tenth of this room. Okay, that area we can put uh, 24 million books. 24 million books are considered your library. Maybe even your library cannot contain that many books, <laughs> right? So, maybe, so the whole library can be contained inside this small area. It's possible. Okay, so that's why we call the, uh, this uh, talk is about uh, there's a plating, plating room at the bottom. In small scale, if we keep shrinking things, it's possible. <coughs> 